Hallelujah, hallelujah. Welcome everyone this morning to the Hand of God Ministry. I see everybody saw a good morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Are we alive unto the Lord? Are we sitting in our chairs backslidden? Are we here because we're here? Are we here because we want to be here? How many are glad to be in the house of God this morning? Does your pastor have to stir you up every time we come to church? Can I get a little stirring from the body this morning? Can I get an amen? Come on, someone stand and give them a praise. Pastor has to stand first. Let you be the one to stand. Come on and give him a praise in the house of God. Come on and worship him in the house of God. Come on and praise him in the house of God. Hallelujah. Sometimes you got to raise your praise, church. Can I get an amen? Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Father. You're waiting for us to show up. No one said sit down. No one said sit down. Come on and stand up, church. Come on and praise him. Come on and worship him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Are we alive? Are we well? Has God done something for you? Amen. We got something to shout praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. Amen. Go ahead. Be seated. That takes a lot, boy. Amen. Amen. We serve a good God. We serve an on-time God. Let me tell you something. We serve a God who is alive. Can I get an amen? We don't serve a dead God, church. And we got to make sure that he stays alive in our hearts. We got to thank him every day so that we make sure that what's going on in the world doesn't get on us. Let's everybody get settled. Let's get all the wigglies out. Don't let me call you out now. Amen. Y'all love me? You got to love me. You get in trouble. Hallelujah. Let's everybody get settled in, get all of the, uh, the fidgeties. I don't like people that fidget a lot. Always looking around and not paying attention. Teachers, do you love that? <laughs> oh, teachers hate that, They're always fidgeting, always looking around, not paying attention, looking up here to me when I'm talking. <laughs> Amen? Yeah. How many knows the prophets here? Yeah. So be careful. Amen? Pastor will be on call next Sunday, and you'll be happy. But we got something to say. The Holy Ghost has something to say this morning. Who's the teacher? Come on, talk back to me, church. Don't let me have you stand up again and praise again and get some of that stuff out of you. Amen? Enemy's been roaming around for too long. We got to start kicking them out and getting them out of our house. Joseph knew how to do that, right? And the title of what we're talking about today is The Lord is With. Did y'all enjoy last Sunday? The Lord is with. The Lord was with Joseph even when he was sold into slavery. Amen? He got sold into Potiphar's house. Y'all remember that? He was only 17 years of age when he got sold into slavery. He was a teenager when he got sold into slavery. There was some purpose to why God allowed this to take place over young Joseph's life. Whatever you're going through today, church, you got to know that God has either allowed it or he's permitted it. Can I get an amen? If you understand the mind of God, you're going to understand your situation a little better. Because your season, there's a reason why you're there going through what you're going through. Hallelujah. But you got to know that the Lord was with Joseph and Joseph was there because God had a divine purpose for his life. And he has to go through some things before God can set him up as being prince over Egypt. Whatever you're going through right now, church, there is a reason for your season. And you got to be careful that you don't get upset with God because where he has you at that very moment. Can I get an amen? amen. And so the Lord is with Joseph. And we find our text today in Genesis 39. For those who don't know me, I'm. Senior pastor here at HGM, Pastor Jesse Diaz. And for those watching online, thank you for joining us. And we're in the book of Genesis chapter 39, and we're going to try and attempt to finish this in two parts. Because there's a lot going on with Joseph. Hallelujah. 
We want to aspire to be like Joseph. How many want to be like Joseph? And I want to start in verse 2. We're not going to go through all of this again, but I want to kind of catch you up. Because we've got to catch what's going on in the scriptures here. Amen? Amen. Verse 2 says, the Lord was with Joseph. Everybody say, was with Joseph. The Lord was with who? He was with Joseph. Even in the middle of his slavery, the Lord was with Joseph. Amen. The Lord is at your place of employment. Amen. Even when it looks like they're throwing all these mandates on you, guess what? The Lord is with you. Are you hearing me, church? When they're trying to mandate vaccines, the Lord is with you. Don't be fearful. The Lord is with you. I got to keep saying that, church, so it gets in your spirit. The Lord is with you. Even when you misbehave. <laughs> Even when you try to color outside the lines, guess what? The Lord is still with you. Amen. Hallelujah. He may have to deal with you a little different, but guess what? The Lord's still with you. <laughs> yeah, amen. Come on now. The Lord was with Joseph, so he succeeded. Everybody say succeeded. That word succeeded in King James means prosperous. Woo. That means the Lord prospered. Everything he did as he served in the home of the Egyptian master. Hallelujah. I, I, I got a lot to say this morning, church, but when something just jumps out at you in Scripture, you got to slow your spirit down and camp out there for a little bit. Are you hearing me? That's the way you should study God's Word when you're reading God's Word and something starts to grab a hold of your spirit the Holy Ghost is trying to impart something into you at that very moment. You have to slow your spirit and your mind down and let the Holy Ghost minister to your spirit man. Let it get all in you. And as you see, it says that he served. He became a servant in the house of Potiphar. He served. That means he didn't know how to serve at his dad's house because he was pampered he was spoiled he was an american i mean he was spoiled <laughs> i'm gonna get messy today amen gotta pick up the toes we're i'm including myself in that we are spoiled mm. Spo don't even have to go to work now mm. just bring it on inside the mail just go look at your mailbox boom my check is here don't have to have the luxuries. I don't have to excel. I'm okay with what I have because everything's being taken care of. Amen? Spoiled. If Joseph had stayed in his father's house, Jacob, he would have stayed spoiled. He would have been pampered. Joseph didn't know how to serve, church. Most of the body of Christ doesn't know how to serve. Uh-oh, everybody got quiet. Wow, because it's true. Look, church, we all come in and want to be leaders and we want to be overseers and we want to witness and we want to testify. We want to do wonders and thunders for God. I want God. Who doesn't want God to use them? Do you want God to use you? Every born again person in the body of Christ wants to be used in someone else's life. That should be your purpose as a Christian, as a believer, amen? But you have to go through some steps, and you have to go through process before God can truly use you as a man or a woman of God. We have entirely too many children in the body of Christ that are pampered and spoiled, amen? And God is trying to push you somewhere to a place of being uncomfortable for a season. And when you think it's the devil, really it's God doing something in your life. That right there was a good place for an amen. Amen? amen. So you can see the design, if you know the mind of God, that Joseph understands what's going on when he gets there. He may not fully understand the will of God, but he loves God so much, he's willing to be led by God wherever he needs to go. 
And if you want to serve in the body of Christ in any capacity, that's where you start, is a servant's heart in the kingdom of God. Pastor, what can I do? Pastor, I'm covering you. Pastor, how can I lend my hand into this ministry? Oh, praise God. If you want to lead, you got to learn to serve. Joseph didn't understand that. Joseph had to have some character built up. He had to have some fruit produced in his life. When pressure hits an individual, come on now, when trials come into your life, when suffering shows up at your front door, amen? You don't have to go out into the world. The world will come knocking right on your door. Show up in your computer in your bank account. What happened? Amen? Hallelujah. What are those designed for? What are all those trials? And so I'm talking about the saint who's in God's perfect will. I'm not talking to the lost today. I'm talking to the church of the living God. I'm talking about those who are yoked to the Father, yoked to Jesus Christ. Can I get an amen? When you understand these things, you understand that whatever season you're in, there's a purpose for your season, church. And it's not about you. It's about someone else. It wasn't about Joseph. It was about the entire nation of Israel. Because the Messiah was to come through that lineage. And God had to preserve that lineage. And he's using mighty Joseph who has to get broken down and built back up through trials and suffering and pain, church. Well, that's not a, hallelujah, let me, boy, that's good stuff, boy. Amen for the trial. Oh, praise Jesus. You're not going to get a lot of shouting on that because the commercial church won't teach that because you're not going to get your church full and filled and overflowing. There is a process to everything you go through, church. I came with a word this morning for the body of Christ. Can I get an amen? Don't grow weary. Don't grow weary, church, in well-doing. Sometimes you just got to pick yourself up and go to the house of God. And God is pleased with that. Amen? But you see, I got to slow down. I'm getting ahead of myself, but I want you all to see something. Now watch this. The Lord was with Joseph. And because the Lord was with Joseph, he succeeded in everything he did. Y'all following me? Y'all in y'all's Bibles. Genesis 39. We're in verse 2. We're in the New Living Translation. If I have another translation, I'll bring it up. So he succeeded in everything he did. Watch this, church. As he served in the home of his Egyptian master. I can't even get off that scripture. See? You got to camp out. You want to prosper, you got to serve. I got one hallelujah because she knows how to serve. Boy, I'd be excited, boy. I, we couldn't wait to serve in the ministry we grew up in. That's why we're pastors today. That's why we're overseers today. That's why we're leaders today in the church, in the body of Christ. Can I get an amen? We learn to serve. We would go to the church. We clean up the church. You think that you're just cleaning up and, oh, and, and you have that nasty attitude, I'm here to serve. And whatever the reason is, if you do it in a right heart, God sees it. I'd go to the house of God, and, and my assignment was to clean the, was clean the pulpit. I cleaned that pulpit like it was God's pulpit himself. I got in there, and I, was, I began to weep sometimes when I would touch the sacred desk of the man of God because I respected the man of God. Are you hearing me, church? I respected and honored the man of God. We don't have enough of that in the body of Christ. Amen. Honoring and submitting and respecting and, and, and coming and lifting up the man of God. The Bible says that pastor and I are a gift onto the church. How do you treat that gift? How do you honor that gift? Hallelujah. So it says he served. In Potiphar's house. But that also everything he touched his hands to prospered in Potiphar's house. Amen. Woo! 
Church, you got to be in the right house. You can't be disconnected from the house of God. You want to be blessed, but you don't come to the house of God. Every one of you that come every Sunday and come every Wednesday and those that bring your family, let me tell you one thing. You put your hand to the right house and God's going to keep you blessed. Good place for an amen. Thanks for the hand clap. It's good, though. You see, even though I, 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 I camped out so long there, I said, Lord, I have so much to share, and I'm afraid I'm going to get stuck right here. <laughs> but we don't want to rush the Holy Ghost. If he's sitting here, there's a reason why. That means God has to get something into your spirit about serving. It's not about us. Joseph was about himself. Joseph was, gimme, gimme, gimme. He was an American, I mean, he was a, you know. Amen? How much can I have? There's nothing wrong. Because it did say that he, he, was pro he prospered in everything he did. God wants his people to prosper. Amen? You don't have a poverty mindset to think that we need to grovel and live in a shack and still be holy. I can still live in a mansion and be holy, church. You just got to let those things, not allow those things to have hold on you. It's not money that's evil. It's the root of, it's the love of money that's the root of all kinds of evil. You understand what I'm saying? It's the love of whatever you love that gets into your heart that becomes evil. Amen? So do we understand that God wants us to prosper? Do you understand that God wants you to overflow financially in your life? Okay, does so that just happen automatically? Oh, y'all must go to the hand of God ministry. Y'all must go to a Bible teaching church that teaches you how to get in the will of God. That's why we don't command money to cometh. You don't have to say money come, come and, and confess money. I need to show up. No, God says get your money in the bank, in the bank. Make a deposit. Hey, look, church, go read your Bible. That's Old Testament. Hmm? I heard a pastor say, and it was a beautiful revelation. It said to bring the tithe. It didn't say pay the tithe. It said bring the tithe. You're bringing it. Amen? Amen. You're bringing the tithe because it belongs to God. Y'all understand that? <laughs> bringing the tithe means it's already set apart. That means it's holy unto the Lord. Hallelujah. That means it's already consecrated. It's the Kareem, according to the, you know, original translation. The Kareem means it's holy unto the Lord. You touch the holy things of God. Guess what? You pull a curse upon your life. Amen. And for those who are lined up, you know what I'm talking about. The favor of God, church. Let's keep going. Potiphar. Everybody say noticed. <laughs> I'll say it again. Everybody say noticed. The employer noticed, family noticed, something's going on with that person over there. Potiphar noticed this and realized that the Lord was what? Did you, did you see that, church? I can't even get off that scripture right there. That means Potiphar is watching this young man as he works in his garden, that he starts working in his house. He's making investments with his money. Everything that he's touching his hands to is prospering for Potiphar. And Potiphar is watching and he sees something happening in his house. When you come and you yoke yourself up to the ministry that God has called you, something is going to start flowing into your life because you have yoked yourself up with the man and woman of God at the church that God has called you to. That's called covenant relationship, church. But we got too many renegades in the body of Christ that are thinking they can do this thing on their own. And every time they disconnect from the anointing and the presence and the church of the living God, they begin to deteriorate. They become spiritually deprivated. They start to experience lack and they start to experience poverty. 
spiritually, physically, and financially. True? Hey, you know what? Just we, we're, we're saying give us a year of your life. You ever heard John Osteen used to say that? When you would come into Lakewood, the old Lakewood, the old true Lakewood, and the anointing was there and the presence of God was there. The pastor would say, give us a year of your life and watch what God will do. We say now two years. You have to. We know after a year, you still got the wigglies. You're still wiggling. Your flesh still gets uncomfortable when you come in to an atmosphere like this because you're not used to sitting under the word of God. And so conviction hits your spirit and you think there's judgment coming. And it's not judgment. It's God dealing with your spirit. Hallelujah. But to those who've been with us more than two, three, four years, they come in. Oh, this is just the way it's done. Hallelujah. Oh, God's checking my spirit right now. Oh, I, I, I get that, Lord. Oh, that stung a little, but I receive it, Lord. Thank you, Father. Oh, the pastor said something I didn't like. Oh, I, I receive that, though, because that's my spiritual authority. That's my leader. That's my pastor. Mm. Well, you see, he got quiet again. Uh-oh, I got to back up, Pastor. Uh-oh. And back up a little, getting to. We're 20 minutes in. Nobody running yet, so let's go. Let's keep going. Y'all still here with me? You see, something's got to go. <laughs> God's trying. Look, look, church. God's trying to get something to you. He, he, wants, he wants to get the blessing to you. But he's got to get some disobedience out of you. He's got to get some rebellion out of you. He's got to move some sin out of you. There comes the trials, the, the suffering, the, the pain. Amen? Whom God loves, he what? Finish it for me. For, God who, for who God loves, he chastises. He chastens. That word chastise means discipline. Because he what? He loves you. I say, Lord, you must love me a lot. God has to love some a little more. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that, church. Did not your parents, my mom and dad, she, did, did they not love you growing up? Do, do, do kids, does, does not your mom and dad love you very much? We got young people here. Do they, do they not love you by disciplining you? They discipline you because, what, they love you. You ever heard of that kid that walks around and you have the other kid and you, I'm talking to you young people, when you're at school and the young person is telling you all the stuff they get to do, and my parents don't tell me nothing, and they get, I just get to do whatever I want, and you're jealous of them because they get to do whatever they want, <laughs> amen? But then later on as they get older, they start to figure out some things, then they're looking at your life as your mom and dad are involved in every aspect of your life, they start to want that. Hmm, that hit me, that hit my spirit. Well, my mom and dad were involved. Maybe a little too much, but they were involved. <laughs> they were involved in everything I did. This is it's, it's two things you're going to do in our house. You're going to work or go to school. Third one was military. <laughs> I don't know how great that is now, but maybe we had to wait till the term's over and then maybe see how about going to join in the military. <laughs> Come on now, loosen up, you guys are tight in here, loosen up a little. The word's going to work, amen? Y'all think we just come up here to do a sermon every time we open the church, they're going to read the word again? No, we need the word. The word is what separates soul and spirit. The soul part of you is your emotion, will, and mind. That stuff needs to be separated. That's your personality. You can't be led by your will, your emotions, or your soul. You'll get in trouble. You need the word of God to divide that so that you can have a proper understanding how God's trying to lead your life. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. I said hallelujah. hallelujah. That's good. That's good. That's good preaching. That's good preaching, Pastor. I'm going to go back and watch this again. <laughs> hallelujah. Once taught, twice learned, church. Potiphar noticed this and realized that the Lord was with Joseph. Giving him success in everything he did. Hallelujah. Uh, isn't that beautiful? 
That means your boss is watching you. Your family is watching you. Teenagers and young people, your friends are watching you. Amen. Online, they're watching you. And they're seeing that your life is being blessed. They don't understand it. I have to think that maybe Potiphar didn't understand the blessing that was upon Joseph's life. Young man coming into his place of business, his home, and everything starts prospering. That's the way it should be, church. Hallelujah. I used to work for this place called, uh, well, it was a supplement place. I won't give the name because we're online now, you know, so. But it's no big, big thing. But I used to work for a supplement business, and it was a nonprofit business. I got there, and uh, things just seemed to flourish in my life. I went from employee, assistant manager to manager, managing the place, opening and closing by myself, and entire, it was like that, everything I touched my hands to in the business world, church. Yeah. Let me tell you, church, we could go, and we can go make six figures real easy, <laughs> me and pastor. We don't do this for money. But how many knows money takes the kingdom moving? Amen? Go read your Bible. Well, a situation happened, and they wanted me to go out and march with them in a gay parade. I worked, you know, in a predominant area where it was a LGBT community. I have no idea to this day why God put me there, but he did. You don't have to understand everywhere God puts you. Hallelujah. You just got to be obedient. You have to be faithful so that you can fulfill the call of God on your life. Hallelujah. You're trying to understand everything. The Lord said, just be led. Do you have peace? I do have peace. Well, then I was going to say shut up, but <laughs> keep quiet. I hear the Lord just say, keep quiet. Be quiet and just serve me and trust me and be at peace. You have to follow that kind of peace. I was in the peace. I was in the middle of a gay community, and God had me at peace. So you can probably begin to understand or vision what I dealt with coming in out of the supplement place and how many times. I was being hit on, and it wasn't by women. <laughs> Amen? This is my story. This is my story. This is my truth, living out my truth. Everything has a purpose, church. Everything has a season. It's not for me. I went through all those things, just not for me. But look, let me tell you this. They wanted me by... Uh, it was mandatory that I go to the gay parade, you know, out there, I think it's Westheimer in that area where they, they do the Montrose, thank you, Houstonians, praise God, let me hanging out there, thank, thank you, they wanted me to march in the gay pride parade, I said, I can't do that, I'm already full-blown Christian, I'm walking in the convicting power of the Holy Spirit by now, Pat, I'm telling you, church, You'll be handed certain things when you think no one else is looking, and that's where you have to draw the line in the sand. Either you're going to stand for Christ or you're not. I'm having to stand against this knowing I may lose my job. You may be called to stand against something where it's going to put pressure that you may lose your job. But, but guess what? That's a time where I did not submit because it was an ungodly submission. Amen? You have to be bold in God. Either you believe this stuff or you don't. I told them, no, I can't do that. Someone may see me. That thing's televised. Someone may see me as a Christian and get the wrong idea. I don't want my witness to be disturbed. That's what the devil's coming after, church. He's coming after your witness. He's coming after your testimony. He wants you to compromise. The pandemic was supposed to wake us up. Didn't wake us up, put us to sleep. Oh, that's a good shot for an amen there. Oh, that's weak. Amen. Because some of us haven't come out of that pandemic yet. We're still stuck there. I'm not talking about the loss. They've always been lost. They've always been in a pandemic. Y'all think that pandemic was for the lost? Hmm. Then you're still asleep. You haven't woke up yet. 
That pandemic was designed to wake up the church, to come out of its complacency, to come out of its slumber, and start getting on fire for the Lord Jesus Christ. But instead, it made them worse. I'll let y'all sit on that for a little bit. Verse 4. It says, this pleased Potiphar. Okay, well, hold on. Or said, go back to my story. See, the Holy Ghost brings all things to, to remember. He'll make you wise. Amen. He'll make you smart. The word of God will make you smart. It'll make you genius. Genius prone. Sin makes you dumb. The world makes you dumb. It makes you dull of hearing. You can't hear the Holy Ghost no more. Got too much junk going on. Amen. Got to get the junk out. So you can properly hear the leading of God's spirit. Some of us come in and there's a train wreck coming by us. And we're just like, we don't even know what's going on around us. Be in tune in the spirit. I said no. Well, they came up with a lie to get me out of there. That I was stealing records from the HIV patients in their computer. Because they dealt with a lot of that going through there. And they said I stole records from there took them home. To this day, I can't even know why I would do that. It was a bad lie, but it was still a lie. Why? Because I stood for righteousness. That is persecution, church. That's a form of suffering because you stand on the side of righteousness. Some of you don't know what I'm talking about because you have not done that yet. Temptation comes and you're like, let's go over there and have a drink. Let's go do this over here and watch this. You're like, a, what is that? That's, I'm already tired. <laughs> I've run out of gas. But for you who stand for righteousness, you know what I'm talking about. There's a level of suffering there. There's a level of rejection there. And it hurts. Hmm. But the Lord is with me. <laughs> and the Lord is pleased. You know, when they got rid of me, they fired me, they let me go for that reason I came in and it was the whole staff there, and they had this big, giant meeting. Got exposed and felt, feels ugly when you're that kind of person. It feels really ugly. Every one of you need to go through that. We bear witness with Christ when we do that. We bear witness with the sufferings and the persecutions of Christ. Didn't the Bible say that? We share in the sufferings of Christ when we stand for Christ. You have to know that, church. It hurt when they were being lied, when I was being lied about. I had to leave that place, and I turned in my key. It was very humiliating because there was nothing I was going to say that was going to say different or, or, or change the outcome. So I left, and let me tell you, a year later, was it about a year? Maybe a little longer than a few years later. About three years later, the whole thing just came crashing down. They're not in business no more, completely wiped out. Their business, bankrupt, everything, lost. We've had maybe three or four instances like that. We walk into a place, mistreat us, come out, and it closed about a year later. That is the anointing on your life, church. Do not touch my, my anointed. Isn't that what the Bible says? You never have to worry about trying to rectify whatever situation you're going through. You never have to worry about getting vengeance. You never have to worry about harboring anything in your heart towards that other individual. You better pray for them, <laughs> and you better ask God's mercy to fall on them because they don't know that they're touching a son and a daughter. They don't know they're touching God's children. Amen? So you love them. Mm. Why did I say all that? To say Because those men, all of them, were watching me. I don't know the effect it might have had on them later on down the line, but I stood my ground and said, for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. I said, for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Do you have that kind of priesthood in your house? When no one else is watching, but God is watching, do you stand on this side of righteousness? Amen. I told you the prophet was here. Verse 4 says, this please, Potiphar. So he soon made Joseph what? His personal attendant. He put him in charge of his entire household and everything he owned. 
Now, King James says some time passed. There was some time that passed during everything. Everybody looking up here. Everything he went through, everything he endured. That means complete submission to Potiphar. Now he's being promoted. Amen. Everybody, hallelujah, that puts their hand to the house of God, to the kingdom of God. Doesn't matter what God has called you to. You may be just sitting where you are right now, and God is calling you to intercede on behalf of this church. Intercede for the pastors of this church. The church not growing, it's not growing, there's not that many people there. Are you praying? Or are you crying out with complaint? How many intercessors do we have? How many prayer warriors do we have here? Amen. We got one that raised her, no shame, raised her hand up back here. I know Sister Zoe prays. Are you kidding me? I know Sister Norma prays like nobody's business. Y'all should be throwing y'all's prayer requests that way so she can pray for them on Tuesday. You think she's going to reject, reject your prayer request? No. Get someone who knows how to reach heaven. We got into entirely too many people coming in and sitting and waiting. I need mine. Mine. This is uh, uh, Abigail, my youngest brother, Pastor Jacob over in San Antonio, just beautiful man of God. He, his little girl, she's so little, she's only like two. She's two years old, and she had a little lemonade out there on top of the table, and I look at the lemonade. I like to mess with little kids. Me, that's just what I like to do. I like to get something stirring in them. Not all the time. That's just a love that I have, though, for that individual. So and I said, I grabbed the lemonade. I said, mine. She goes, no, no. That's mine, mine. She already knows, mine. Grab that lemonade. Can I have some? No. (laughs) We don't know how to share, church. (laughs) That's rooted in our sinful nature. We inherited that nature from Adam, amen? That's some stuff that needs to be crucified out of your life. The selfishness that we have, that we don't even know how to tithe correctly, and we've been in church for all our lives. That's a shame. Go look up what time is at 10%. How hard is it? Hmm. And you wonder why you're physically sick. All, uh-oh. Physically sick all the time. We're well, out of the will of God. You know better. Y'all been with us a long time. I'm talking. Ain't no, no one time guest. Poor, time, poor she came on the wrong time. We got home folk here. God bless you, sister. We, we got home folk here that can endure The kind of messages that come here. Why? Because your pastor here at the hand of God is trying to get you to a place. But in order for that stuff to be rooted out of you, you're going to have to go through seasons of crucifying the flesh and getting some of this selfishness out of you. Even when you're going through your trial, you still think it's about you. Why, God? Why, God? And that complaint and that murmur. I know what I'm talking about. I've walked it out, church. When you're in that uncomfortable place, your heart starts to stir and something starts coming out of this mouth and saying, oh, you start to complain. You start to murmur. You hate your situation and you forgot to trust your God. What do you think those trials are designed to do? They're to seek and to find out what you're lacking. And then you have God develop that through the Holy Ghost. It's called fruit bearing. Amen. Come on now. That's a good place to be. That's the pruning. Uh, you know, you got to get to a place where, Lord, I just love to be pruned. I love my garden to be pruned. I, li- I like to be pruned, Lord. What Christian goes around saying, I like to be pruned? Uh, just prune me, Lord. Prune me, Lord. Lord, I, ca- I, ca- I, ca- I call in. I'm blessed going in, blessed going in. I'm heading not to tell. I, 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 I prosper and everything. I touch my hands to prosper. Those are good things to have. But there's more to it, church. There's a whole lot more to it. I prophesied last Sunday that the refiner, the, 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 the refiner is sitting. Who is the refiner of, of gold and silver? Jesus Christ himself is the refiner of gold and silver. And the holy fire of God is brushing through the body of Christ right now. And those found lacking and wanting are going to be removed. That's the wood, hay, and stubble. 
Those that are confessing Jesus from the heart out. Those who are professing religion instead of having a relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen. It's not about religion. It's about having a relationship with God the Father through what Christ did 2,000 years ago through the blood he shed on Calvary's cross. That is our foundation to everything we do. We confess him as our Lord and Savior. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. With the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And those who call upon the name of Jesus shall be saved. That's it. I didn't hear no rituals in there. Thank God. Can you remember everything you have to do? No. Can you remember the 600 and something uh, commands in the New Testament that you got to follow? I want to hear it. I want you to come and recite them to me. Amen. We're no longer under the law, under grace. You see, when you're born again, your spirit man automatically fulfills the law of God. Because you love God. And when you love God, you fulfill all God's commands. Without even knowing it, the spirit is helping you to fulfill God's law. Isn't that beautiful? Oh, oh, I can't even repeat that if I wanted to. Say, I'm going to go back and watch this, Lord. Take some notes. Verse 5, from the day, from that day, watch this. Joseph was put in charge of his master's household. It says first he gave him a personal attendant. It says he put him in charge of his entire household and everything he owned. Verse 5. From the day, from the day, from the day Joseph was put in charge of his master's household and property, the Lord began to what? Bless Potiphar's. Oh, oh let, church, let, look. Stop watching CNN. Stop watching MSNB. Stop watching Houston News. Amen. You want to tune in for your weather and your traffic. You don't need to. You don't even need to tune in for traffic report no more. You already know what it's going to be. Traffic. <laughs> Conditions are horrible. <laughs> Do you need to turn on for traffic report? Not really. Is there an alternate? Is there an alternate route? Route? Whatever you want to say. Download uh, the app Waze or whatever and check out your map. It'll tell you go go this way. It's going to save you a whole two minutes. Because there is no alternate route. <laughs> We've ran out of routes, church. Oh, my God. Root route, however you want to say it. Look, church. It's funny here. Watch this. I, I want to share something with you. Watch this. It says, from the day Joseph was put in charge of his master's household and property, the Lord began to bless Potiphar's house. Hold for Joseph's sake. Whoo. Uh, for Joseph's sake. All right, did y'all hear that? Potiphar was blessed because of who? You all are blessed because of Christ? I'll go a little further because this is where the church is missing it. Come down and get where you live. You all here are blessed because you're in the pasture where he's called you to be. And you get blessed more when you have a servant's heart when you come into a house like this. Amen? That means your spirit comes in, you're submissive to the spiritual authorities that God has placed over your life. Hallelujah. There's no complaint. There's no backbiting. There's no gossiping. There's no harboring any kind of ill will towards the pastors or your brothers and sisters in Christ. Amen. I'm coming to serve because Jesus said, what? I, I, I didn't come to be served. I, I came to serve. Isn't that what he said? He came to serve. He came to serve man. We come to serve. When we come in, we're serving one another. Your lack of attendant is not serving. Your lack of faithfulness and commitment to the house of God is not serving. Every time you come through the doors, I guarantee you, though they may not verbally confess it, your brother and sister in the Lord is glad to see you. I'm glad to see sister every time she comes in. She lifts my spirit every time I see her. Every time I see Sister Miracle, my spirit is lifted. You're coming in and you're lifted because you see the family of God. There is a stirring and encouragement that we gather from the body of believers. You think we come to church and hang, sit in my chair and just, all right, just uh, with some water burger. I'm waiting for a water burger. <laughs> Boy, pastor taking a long time. Let's hear Looking around, fidgeting. Let's see, let me see who's here, who's not here. <laughs> you know what? I'm here. 
I'm here. We're here because all of you are here. <laughs> Amen. I don't care if there's two people that show up. I'm here. Amen. I got delivered from that a long time ago. Because my Bible says where two or three are gathered, we can have church. We have more than three here. We can have church. Oh, praise Jesus. So much more to say. So Potiphar was blessed because of Joseph. Y'all hear me, church? For Joseph's sake, the entire house. You priest of the home, men. That house will be blessed because of your walk. Are you hearing me? What you allow in is going to get over. It's going to get on everybody in that house. Woo! Come on now. I am the priest of my house. My wife isn't. I am. And she submitted to that. You hear me? The roles have been flipped in America. That's why you see all these movies coming out. Women beating up on men. This little woman beating up this 300-pound man. Are you kidding me? Let that woman come to H-Town and see what happens. Ain't happening. What, what is all that? That's the devil. Demasculate men. And to switch those roles around that God ordained for the husband to lead. Now we got women trying to lead. It's out of order, church. It's demonic. You be submissive to your husband's wives. And watch what your household do. I'm talking about brawl beat them and you got to be submissive. It's, our, it's our, our time to be alone, so be submissive. That went over y'all's head, didn't it? I couldn't say it any better than that because we're in the house of God. And guess what? You got to go. You're making up stuff. I got a headache. Mm -mm. You know you were bad. Mm -mm. Don't do that. Get in trouble. Boy, we're getting messy in here. Because I'm in y'all's, it, it just, it just, it's healthy when the man of God, now, now I know there's situations where the husband's just like, don't want to do nothing. Okay, and he just, he just wants to sit there now. If he's lost, he's lost. That doesn't give you the right to disconnect. You keep believing for that one who needs to be saved. Your relationship sanctifies the marriage. And you cover that, that husband that's lost or that wife that's lost. Hallelujah. But I'm talking about the men who want to step up and be the priest of their home. If you're not doing it, guess what? I see a lot of what's going on in the body of Christ. The woman has to step up and be the priest of the house because the man has become lazy. He doesn't want to do anything spiritually. But here at the Hand of God Ministry, I'm seeing more men come in, and I've been praying for that, that men will start being men of God. Y'all waiting to see what I'm going to say next. I know that. <laughs> oh, what's he gonna... Well, I was, I was coming to do a little sit down, pray, and leave. Y'all get This is church. This is church. This is, the church is not for the world. The church isn't for the lost. Evangelism is. The gospel is. Woo! Come on now. Y'all got to go get stirred up, get some people saved. Yeah. Potiphar. Joseph, where we at? We're already at 48 minutes. I mean, I had my guys back there load up some stuff. We we're going to show on the screen. It's we're already at 50. I haven't even got to the best part yet, Lord. Hallelujah. You guys, <laughs> you guys are already full. We're going to, you know what? I may come back to it. We'll see. Even if we pause for Christmas, the Lord said, I'm coming back to this. We're not going to leave this. Yeah, we're going to come back to this. We do what we need here. We're the pastors. We're not in somebody's program or on a board we got to check with. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Give him a hand clap. A hey, hand clap because I'm done or is a hand clap because you got blessed. Hallelujah. Let's stand. The Lord.